As the years progressed and we went into the mid-70s, for a brief shining moment in the history of American film, there was an efflorescence of creativity, of risk-taking that didn't really exist before. Movies like, you know, Mean Streets and, and Taxi Driver, The Godfather films, many, many other movies that were sort of high-profile maverick successes, it was a very much a director-driven era. It couldn't last because ultimately a lot of the films didn't make as much money as they were supposed to, Heaven's Gate being the classic example. These were movies that were, you know, colossal and stupendous failures from a financial standpoint. Uh, Heaven's Gate pretty much did in United Artists. At the same time, you had the corporatization of the studios because of the success of films like Jaws and Star Wars. Now, Lucas and Spielberg were both attempting to do something a little different. Now, Spielberg was always a company player. He started out very young at Universal. He had a TV contract. He did a lot of episodic television. He was very quick. He was very fast. He was very good. He moved right into the bloodstream of the studio system. Jaws was so successful that it basically woke up the studio to the idea that, well, we can blanket market this movie. We can show it in a million theaters, you know, summer blockbuster. This was a somewhat new approach in marketing. It set the template for how movies were released of that nature from there on. And when Star Wars came out from George Lucas, that suddenly spoke franchise to everybody. It took off to such a great extent, even more unexpectedly. People bought into that mythology and it became the template for the whole science fiction fantasy realm of movie making. What Jaws and Star Wars really set forth was the notion of high concept. If you look at the films that were the most popular in the in the 80s, they're almost all, you know, big blockbuster fantasy films that spawn franchises like Raiders, like Beverly Hills Cop, Ghostbusters. These are all movies that were set up to be franchises. One of the things that was going on during this era is that the, the average age for movie going dropped. Audiences were markedly younger on average. You had a lot of teen pictures, you know, a lot of the John Hughes era was part of all of this. Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller. These movies were tremendously popular because you had a young audience that was hungry for that kind of movie. The question that one had after a while, if you came up loving the movies of the 60s and, and early mid-70s was, where's the beef? Where's the beef? The commercialization of the industry, the, the franchise mentality, the turning away from the, you know, the auteurism of the Maverick era, created an environment where Hollywood was no longer considered to be uh, the place to go if you were an up-and-coming filmmaker. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Despite the corporatization that was going on, it was always possible to work within these confines. It, it wasn't by any means impossible, as all of these examples show, to do great work within an increasingly corporate situation. 